Hello, Pisces. Welcome to Divine Conversations. Welcome to January 2022. And welcome to this reading for January of 2022. Yeah. Thank you all so very much for tuning in. If you are new to the channel, hello. My name is Eric. It is so wonderful to meet you. Thank you so much for being here. Please make sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Yeah. Do it. Smashing that like button helps me with this uh, algorithm. Yeah. Of YouTube. Leave me a comment in the comment section, lo section down below. Let me know, let me know how this resonates for you and definitely subscribe if you're new here. Yeah. I am available for private readings. If you'd like to get one, just find my email address in the description box below. Uh, email me, let me know you'd like a reading and I will get you all set up. Also, if you'd like some extra content with me throughout the month, check us out on Patreon, patreon.com slash divine conversations. All of the link, the link for that and all other information, information can be found in the description box below. So we are going to get started with Pisces rising. Now, when I speak to Pisces rising, I'm going to be talking about the astrology. And when I talk about astrology, I am talking about it from the true sidereal point of view, which is different than tropical mainstream or even Vedic. Okay. So if you're new to sidereal astrology, you've never seen the chart or anything like that. You would like to see what your chart is in relation to sidereal astrology. Hit me up, send me a, an email with your information, and I will gladly send you your chart. And I do have some services available for interpretations if you would like that. But if you'd also, if you just like your chart, then just email me. I'm not going to charge you for that. Um, but yes, we're going to get started with Pisces rising. Okay. We're going to talk through the astrology and I'm going to pull intuitive messages and cards for you for that. If you are not a Pisces rising, or if you would just like, say you're a cross watcher or whatever, or you just don't want to see that part of the reading, check the link or the, the comment section down below, the, the pinned comment in the comment section down below, also the description box. There are timestamps there for you to skip ahead should you want to skip this part of the reading. Yeah. Alrighty guys. So Pisces rising. Hi guys. So your, your feeling, your, your month what I got for you, what I channeled for you here, the, 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 as you can tell already, the title of your reading is a clean slate. Um, the first thing that I channeled was a blank slate and it's interesting Pisces, because as I was sitting here looking at your chart, things felt kind of blank and not that nothing is going on in your life. It's just that it was just, it was just a clear, a blank slate, a clean slate. Right. And um, I feel like you've been going through a period, Pisces, where you've been trying to get down to the bottom of certain things. Um, and at this point, I feel like you're coming to a place, Pisces, where you're starting to get either a deeper understanding of something, some new direction that you would like to move into, or you've been able to receive the appropriate or the proper information for you to really start over in some way. Okay. In essence, that's why I'm feeling like this is kind of a clean or a blank slate type of energy for you. So let's get into the chart here and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. Okay. So here we go. This is the chart for Pisces. Pisces rising for January of 2022. As you can see, the date on this chart is the 6th of January. That is today. That is the day that this um, reading is being recorded. Now, big focal points for the whole collective, the sun and moon, the sun and Pluto conjunction, and also the full moon that is happening. The, the sun Pluto conjunction happens on the 17th, the full moon, I'm sorry, the 16th, the full moon happens on the 17th, Uranus goes direct on the 18th. Okay. And everything, a lot of what we're going through right now is heavily induced by, or is heavily affected by what is going on with Uranus. Uranus has been in terms of sidereal astrology, Uranus has been in Aries and specifically since, since, uh, late August, uh, mid to late August of 2021, Uranus has been retrograde. And for me personally, as a reader, as an astrologer, as a guide, I really feel like this is helping us to reshape our sense of self. Okay. Now for you specifically Pisces rising, this transit of Uranus is happening in your second house, which is your house of values, your house of monetary value. It's the house of what it is you do for money 
Um, it is the house of your relationship with business finances, with money, with possessions, your physical possessions. It's your house of your physical possessions. It's a house of what you hold value to, what you place value on or in, in your life, right? And here for you, Pisces, Uranus, you will, first of all, you, Pisces, you do have Aries in your second house, but, but then also you have Uranus moving through Aries, which naturally puts, air, puts Uranus in your second house here. And so for you over this time period, you've been going through a transformation of your personal values. I am picking up on money specifically. Okay. That's what I'm hearing. At least, um, yes, how you make your money. Um, what you spend your money on, right? What As your values change, what you desire to acquire, if you desire to acquire anything at all anymore, right? It changes in relation to what it is you spend your money on and all that kind of stuff. Now, the big thing that I'm, I, I have for you here, Pisces, in terms of this alignment or this shift or needing to understand something more or new or differently is the fact that you have Mars here, which is affecting all of us quite heavily at the moment. Um, because Mars is ruled, I'm sorry, Mars is the ruler of Aries. Aries has this retrograde Uranian energy going through it right now. So Mars is kind of going through it. And this is kind of important right now because later on in the year, by March 3rd, we are going to be having the conjunction between the Sun, Venus, and Mars, which is the final point of this Venus-Pluto conjunction. I'm sorry, not the Sun. Venus, Pluto, and Mars, excuse me. Uh, on the 3rd of March, we have Venus, Pluto, and Mars conjunct. However, Venus and Mars become go conjunct together first, and then they both move forward to where they meet that final point of the three-point conjunction between Venus and Pluto on the 3rd of March. That's a really long-winded astrological jargon way of saying that the masculine and the feminine are in the process of coming together in a brand new way at this time. And so because of that, uh, I mean, the feminine has been going through a lot of reshaping over the course of 2021 anyway. Now it's the masculine's turn. The masculine needs to go through this before he can be rejoined with the feminine. For you specifically, Pisces, I get this feeling that with your Mars, with, or with Mars transiting through your ninth house right now, which is in fact ruled by Sagittarius, where we have Venus currently in, moving in her retrograde motion, as you can see right here. Uh, this is Venus, this is Sagittarius energy. Mars is right here in your ninth house. First, it moved through Scorpio. And for the whole collective, I've been feeling like Mars moving through Scorpio was really digging up a lot of deep, dark, dark secrets or a lot of information, a lot of hidden realities in terms of our masculine energy, what it is we are driven towards, how we take our action towards what it is we're driven towards. It was digging up a lot of things that have been down beneath the surface, un uncovering a lot. And so now Mars is in Ophiuchus, which is helping us or giving us that boost of energy in order to heal whatever it is that came up. For you specifically, Pisces, Mars was moving through Scorpio and is now in Ophiuchus. This is all in your, in your ninth house, okay? And the ninth house is all about, <laughs> the ninth house is all about expansion, travel, um, getting out of your comfort zone, uh, getting out uh, or traveling to foreign lands, foreign countries, things that are outside your immediate surroundings. Uh, ninth house is all about higher learning, philosophy, all right, um, uh, travel, um, uh, oh, learning new languages, communicating in new languages, this, that, and the third, all right? So this feels like, as Mars has been moving through your ninth house, it feels like, what I wrote down here, is that there may have been a drive to learn something, learn about something, learn something new, and or just expand your, your horizons for whatever reason. And in channeling this energy, talking about the energy of Mars here, we do have the King of Wands that's come out. And it's funny, Pisces, because the King of Wands came out a lot for the collective as I was doing the year-end in review. 2021 felt like an energy of going through a massive change in our drive, in, in our sense of identity, and the King of Wands kept coming out. 
Now, for you specifically, Pisces, I do feel like this is this is related to that um, because this your this retrograde transit of Uranus has been has been influencing right here has been influencing a change in our identities. Specifically for you, it is in terms of what it is that you value. Now, with this King of Wands here, uh, Pisces, excuse me, I feel like. This is you getting really confident in your next direction or what it is you want to move forward towards now, now that certain things have been uncovered from the surface. Um, I get this feeling that, you know, you going through this desire to understand or to learn something new, figure something out, helped you to clean the slate. And that's where I got this blank slate, clean slate type of energy from. Um, what I wrote down here is discovery of new knowledge or certain truths may be helping you to start over there. This could definitely be translating into your business or career energies because this conjunction between the sun and Pluto and also the, 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 the full moon that's happening this month, but then also in the future, the conjunction between the uh, Venus, Pluto and Mars is all happening in your 10th house here. And the 10th house rules your position in society, how people view you, maybe even how you view yourself in relation to society also rules your career and finances, your career drive. So for some of you, this is you coming to the realization that the career that you've been working towards or the business that you've been working towards is not relevant, is not valid for you. Um, I'm also, I'm also getting here. You have Saturn in your 11th house right now. The 11th house is the house of our wishes and our dreams, our wishes and goals and all that, but it's also the sign of, or the house of, excuse me, our social relationships, maybe even social contracts, but you know, the groups of people that you hang out with, the groups or societies or collectives or whatever that you are a part of, right? The, the 11th house could also be the house of philanthropy and really helping other people. On top of this, Pisces, you do have Mercury here in your 11th house. Mercury is going to be going retrograde this month. And for all of us, Mercury being in retrograde is a time, I believe, is a time for us to really rewrite the programming. Mercury is going to be going from your 11th house back into your 10th house. And then with Saturn here, I feel like some of you may have hit a roadblock. Okay. Um, I wrote down Saturn, uh, I'm sorry, uh, this may have feel like you've hit a roadblock. Something may have not worked the way that you wanted it to. Something that you may have been hoping or dreaming for may not necessarily have worked out the way you wanted. And that has caused you to want to go back to the drawing board. But I don't, I, I, but, but, but Pisces, understand that I don't feel like this was you going back to the drawing board in a in a defeatist type of way. I feel like there was this real strong drive, King of Wands driven type of energy to figure out why something didn't work or to figure out what's really going on here underneath the surface, okay? With this now, I, remember I was channeling for the energies of Mars and the, the King of Wands came out. With this now you do have the Fool, all right? So it, there is definitely a clean slate here for some of you or there is definitely the ability or the strong propensity for you towards starting a new cycle, starting a new project, something, stepping in a new direction and feeling very confident about it. I don't know what it is that you figured out here, but whatever it is that you learned, Eight of Pentacles is at the bottom of the deck. This definitely could be speaking to business or finance for you. I don't know what it is you've learned, but something about this is really driving you forward. And then with the conjunction between the Sun and Pluto later on this month, on the 16th, right? Full moon is the day after that, the 17th. Uranus goes direct on the 18th. But with the conjunction between the Sun and Pluto, this is a moment for you to really be empowered in this new sense of self or in this new realization of what it is you want to move forward towards. This very much could be surrounding your sense of purpose in life. All right, Pisces. Um, yeah, so new career opportunities, new public identity or position. Yes. And then you have the six of wands with that Pisces. This is going to bring you great success and great fulfillment, not just on uh, an interpersonal level, like with how people see you. I feel like this is more going to be a really strong personal victory for you. Okay. Now, the other thing that I want to point out here for you, uh, Pisces, is that Venus 
um, which is technically the ruler of the second house, is retrograde right now for us. And that's helping us to reshape our values, what it is you are in, align in alignment with. For you specifically, Pisces, what I'm hearing is what it is you're in alignment with in relation to the collective or maybe how that is how the collective is involved with that. A lot of 10th house focus for you for this Venus retrograde. So this, I really do feel like is influencing a change in your line of business for some of you. What can we get on that for Pisces? What is this change in business? Nine of cups in reverse. You're not satisfied. This is very similar to what Aries was. I pull, I channeled for Aries, um, which makes sense. You guys are right next to each other in the Zodiac, but Aries reading was there has got to be more than just this and Aries is going through a similar energy a 10th house focus in terms of changing their public identity for Aries it's a little bit different it's like well I don't really give a flying f what who or what so and so thinks about me that's not in alignment with me anymore for you Pisces the realization here is just that you were not satisfied nine of cups in reverse something was not satisfying you what else can we get for pisces in terms of this career change potentially the world it's time for this to end it's time to really and this actually could have been the focus that um helped you to want to do some research to want to dig in underneath the surface and figure out what was going on here and it doesn't necessarily mean pisces that you got all kinds of answers talking about um talking about answering the question as to why something really wasn't working for you it really could have just been what the information that you got really just solidified the fact that this just wasn't right for you any longer okay just not was not right for you any longer. What can we say about the Pluto Sun conjunction for Pisces? Because I do feel like this is going to empower you to move forward in this next direction. I just heard to give this a chance. But what specifically do we have? The Ace of Wands. New, see, a new direction. This really, this actually, to be honest with you, Pisces, because the Ten of Cups did come out. I didn't necessarily want to take it because it didn't really feel too relevant other than the energies of, yes, your wish fulfillment, ultimate emotional wish fulfillment, but that can also be tied into the wishes of other people. And we can really get lost in the sauce about that. Pisces, you know, I mean, you are the ruler of the 12th house. That's where we really get into the deep depths of the collective and where we can really lose our sense of self in, in terms of the collective, right? Um, but what I've got for you here, Pisces, is that it's time for you to really allow yourself to move in this direct, different direction, regardless as to what anybody else around you might think. Uh, with this Ace of Wands has come the Four of Pentacles, and I do really feel like the conjunction between the Sun and Pluto is allowing to infuse you or imbue you with power to move forward in the direction that you want to be moving in, yeah? Okay, um, so with this conjunction between the Sun and Pluto, the message that I'm getting for you right now is to really hold on. There's that Six of Wands again. Okay, regardless as to what your fears may be saying, Pisces, this is really going to be victor a victory for you. But again, this feels like a, a, a strong personal victory. I don't really think anybody else is uh, is is benefiting from this other than what new business venture you may go after um you're really you are really benefiting from this the most and rightfully so it's your life like come on but in terms of the sun pluto conjunction here it's it's infusing you with a new sense of direction ace of wands or at least the power the belief in yourself to take action in this new direction okay Hold on to the stability, the foundation that you've come to. Don't focus on anything else. Conversely, for others that may be trying to get you to hold on to the foundation that once was, don't pay attention to that. Four of, uh, four of pentacles, two of swords. Instead, focus on the healing between the masculine and feminine and the union of the masculine and fe masculine and feminine that is happening for you, okay? For some of you, this Sun-Pluto conjunction is infusing or imbuing you with the energies to move forward with a greater 
sense of alignment between the masculine and feminine energies within you. Okay. Again, regardless as to what that's going to look like underneath the surf or, or out, uh, outside of you or for everyone else around you. Okay. Focus solely on that. Wow. Wow. Pisces at the bottom of the deck. And I guess this is why this is such a personal victory for you. At the bottom of the deck, you have the Six of Wands. But with that Six of Wands, you have the King of Swords, the Queen of Swords, and the Four of Wands, to then the Three of Wands, and the Ten of Swords. Okay? Ten of Swords is underneath, further underneath the deck. So, I'm going to say the same thing to you that I said to Sagittarius. It is what it is. And that's what the king and queen of wands or swords king and queen of swords are saying it is what it is this is logical this is strictly and i know this is very strange for you pisces but this is not coming from an emotional place this is coming from strict facts straight logic it is what it is you have a new alignment four of wands you have a new foundation that is going to bring you victory should you allow yourself to move forward with it regardless as to what anyone else has to say about it okay now, um, there is something that I just remembered that was coming through here for you. Let me see. Let me see. Let's go back to your chart really quick. Um, oh, that's right. Both of your ruling planets, Jupiter and Neptune, are in the 12th house, your house. Okay. But Jupiter is in Aquarius which is a very emo unemotional sign. And that may actually be where some of this lack of emotion may be coming from within you. Straight facts, okay? The Aquarius energy is very much represented by the King of Swords, which is objective. It is what it is. The facts are the facts, okay? And you felt like you needed to get to the bottom of something. You felt like you needed to understand why something the way it was, was the way it, or is the way it was or why it wasn't working. And you got that information. Whether it told you the specifics of why something didn't, didn't work or didn't happen or it just proved to you that whatever it is you were trying to do wasn't going to work out anyway, you know, regardless of the specifics, the facts are the facts. It is what it is. I'm not moving in that direction any longer. I don't need to be going in that direction any longer. I don't want to be going in that direction any longer. Should you allow yourself, Pisces, to align, use that energy of Jupiter, which is expansive, right? To align with the truth of who you are. Okay. The truth to align with the truth, Aquarius energy of who you are in relation to the collective 12th house energy. If you allow yourself to align with that from a strictly factual point of view, and then move forward with that great victory, great expansion could come your way. Now your second ruling planet of, of Neptune is in your sign of Pisces. Okay. So that's expanding I feel like that's expanding your creativity. That's expanding the possibility or making you much more magical or much more creatively in tune with the possibility of the you, the new you that could emerge from all of this. Okay. Yeah. So that's what I've got for you so far. Pisces rising. I'm going to pause for a second. I'm going to regroup and then we'll come back with general card pull for the energy of the Piscean collective. Yeah. Be right back. Wait, wait, I'm sorry, Pisces. I forgot to close out this part of your reading with some Oracle of the seven energies. Let's get that. Let's get that first before we move forward to Pisces general. Yeah. For Pisces rising closing message, please. Three shuffles. That's one. Two and three. All right. Closing Oracle guidance for Pisces rising for January of 2022. Oh boy. You know what's crazy, Pisces? This has been coming out for the collective a lot here. You have the royal you, which for me represents the higher self. You have a grand symphony. Okay, which to me represents the symphony of the universe and the part that we all or the role that we all play in that symphony. And then you have the storyteller. You have a story to tell, Pisces. There's something about your new direction 
moving forward that is more in tune with or more in alignment with telling the story of the universe but i feel like it's telling the story of the universe as it is meant to be told and that could be why some of you hit that roadblock that i feel like saturn put in your way in terms of it being in your 11th house and just the energy that i was getting from it you may have been trying to serve this purpose or tell this story or be a player, a part and play your role in this symphony, but you may not have necessarily gone about it in the way that was truly aligned with or in tune with you, which at the core of your being, you're already in alignment with the universe and the symphony that the universe wants to play. It's when we get into these three dimensional situations and realities and our egos become conditioned in certain ways that the story is kind of warped, not kind of, it's completely warped. I'm also getting Pisces that there is a grand story that the universe is trying to tell through you, but you have to play your role appropriately or applicably, however that is, a, how that is for you. And I just get this strong sense of clarity, freedom, ease of purpose that's going to be coming forward through you as you align with this moving forward yeah so that's your closing message pisces rising the storyteller the royal you and a grand symphony well yeah all right cool now i'm gonna reset and we will talk to general pisces energy yeah just a second Alrighty guys, welcome to you, to those of you that have skipped the first half of the reading. Hi, welcome to this general card pull for the energy of Pisces, the Piscean Collective. Now, this part of the reading is, as I've been saying, non-denominational, okay? This does not need to necessarily apply to any specific astrological practice okay whatever it is that you resonate sorry guys that you resonate with the most go with it okay so this is for pisces energy the pisces collective sun moon rising venus any placement that you're curious about this also could be an energy or a part of the reading that resonates with a cross watcher or a piscean yeah all right i'm gonna start with the energy oracle deck <clears throat> and let's just give this five shuffles and we'll see what energies what collective messages we have for the energy of pisces for the month of january 2022 yeah here we go one for pisces so your title here pisces at least from the astrology point of view is a blank slate or a clean slate so i do feel like pisces you're going through a process this is three of really aligning with something new that's going to take you into the future this is four and this is five all right so for my pisceans here what's going on what collective messages do we have for pisces for january 2022 please spirit Okay, woman holding a coin is the first card out. And Pisces, this to me has been, this card has been relating to Venus being in retrograde. Venus in retrograde is absolutely helping us to reshape our values in certain ways. I definitely feel like this is a mostly a romantic energy for you, Pisces. So what do we have to say to woman holding a coin for Pisces? What else? What's going on with this? I'm definitely feeling heavy romantic energies here. Some of you are really uh, realigning your value system when it comes to romance. Um, aligning with new partners or aligning with new energy within yourself, which is then taking you to the, uh, the um, advent of aligning with new romantic partners. I'm hearing holding certain values other higher than others. So either you in the past have been holding certain values higher than others that really, I guess for lack of a better term, you shouldn't have been. I don't, I don't know why you'd be able to divine that for yourself. Or it, now you're coming to a place where 
I guess you could say you're maturing and certain values that you held in the past no longer resonate with you. And so you're holding the values of things that really do resonate with you to the most on a higher level. And that would effectively be changing your romance, your romantic lives. That would absolutely, if you're, if the values that you're holding now are of a higher vibration, that would absolutely naturally raise the vibration of your romantic life and even your interpersonal relationships to a higher level. Okay. What else do we have for Pisces here for woman holding a coin? Attachment. Ooh, okay. Okay, so specifically, you guys, specifically, maybe this is even a twin flame energy. I don't know. Take it as it resonates. But specifically, some of you have been attached to certain individuals. And because now your value system is being reshaped or reworked, now you're finding that it's easy for you to detach. You are easily detached or you're just no longer attached to these individuals. And for some of you, I'm picking up on the fact that that happened quite suddenly. Like you didn't even realize it. Of course, you were conscious through the process of your values changing and realigning. But once you sufficiently got rooted in that new alignment, you turned around and realized that the attachments that you had around you in the past are literally just no longer there. Like, like they poof, just disappeared. <laughs> Isn't that funny? And some of you are kind of like, wait, I don't get it. I worked so hard to release those attachments. And then when I wasn't even paying attention, that's when they released. Yeah. Because when you were trying so hard to release those attachments, Pisces, you were doing nothing but just putting more energy into the attachment. So you were literally like, it was counterintuitive, at least the way that you were going about it. Because really, Pisces, for those of you that are resonating with this part, really, it wasn't about the individual that you were attached to that was keeping you there. It was more about what that individual represented, the values that that person aligned with, that you had been, it was, it's more about the values. It's more about the energy than the individual. And when you shift your energy, you shift who and what it is you're aligning with. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, Pisces. Okay. Anything else for Pisces here? Yes. Happy family. This is very much a 10 of cups energy. You're moving towards a happy family life, a happier family life. And then yin and yang. Now, yes, and then blossoming abundance. So yes, yes, Pisces, you are moving towards a happier family life. But really what I'm feeling for you here, Pisces, is that this happy family, this yin and yang, this is representative of you getting balanced equally between masculine, feminine, and inner child. And so for some of you, part of this woman holding a coin or this Venus, Venus retrograde motion that is reshaping or allowing you to get your alignment into greater tune with things that you, that have greater value to you. And I don't mean that they have greater value to you because they make you more money or they give you more status or like it's, it, it, it's really, it's really like what really has value to you. And that is helping you get into alignment. That is helping you balance out this yin and yang, this balance of masculine and feminine, which is then ultimately leading to blossoming abundance. Such beautiful energies for you, Pisces. Let's move forward. I want to get some tarot here. Actually, no. First, I want to start with the um, the, the lover's oracle. Here, since uh, there was such, such a strong mo romantic energy here, let's talk about this. Let's move to the lover's oracle. Two. We'll give this five shuffles. This is two. 
three. Four. And five. So what is some of this healing that Pisces has gone through to help them with this realignment? What, did it, what do you want to say to Pisces about their romantic situation, their romantic reality? First card is not enough. Frustrated in a relationship, lack of confidence, self-sabotage, fear and or ego issues, jealousy. Now, this doesn't necessarily just have to be romantic, you guys. This could just be your values in terms of anything that you value. And for those that watched or those that resonated with the Pisces rising situation, this absolutely translates into what I was feeling because for Pisces rising, Mars is moving through their eighth, their ninth house, excuse me. There was Saturn is in the 11th house and that felt like there was some sort of roadblock in terms of what it is you dream of or what it is you what you what it is you want, your wish fulfillment, that's your 11th house energy. And that caused you with Mars transiting through your ninth house right now, that caused you to question, wait a second, what's going on here? Let me get down to the bottom of this. This is not enough. This is not working properly. Why? Not enough. Okay. What else do we have for Pisces here, please, Spirit? Hand of cards. Take a chance. Risk. Being strategic. Options. Not showing your hand. Gambling. But this was you for a while. You became very secretive for a while. I don't feel like, and I feel like maybe you're not even being all that upfront about it right now, um, but being strategic, very Martian, very Martian, okay? But this was that energy that you were in as you were trying to figure out what the hell is going on here. And then you have, and then you have addiction, codependent, obsession, possession, controlling, has a block or restraint. You were healing this. You were healing the addiction, especially in terms of your romantic situation here, the attachments that you were facing. You had to go into a little bit of a hermit moment. You had to go ahead and be strategic, be secretive, not tell people what you're up to, kind of go off on your own in order for you to understand the root of these addictions. And then for the, those of you that resonated with this part, you got that under control. And now all of a sudden you're no longer addicted or you're no longer attached to those or to those people or those things or whatever that you were in the past it literally like overnight just went away <laughs> now you have the runner runner in a codependent relationship fear of intimacy listening to ego what's this runner energy please spirit for pisces what's the runner here we're gonna stop here Coffin, endings, new, bring new beginnings, growth, change, liberation, date, meeting someone new, getting back out there, plan or set a date, seduction, attraction, flirting, dating, hooking up, temptation, third party interference. Don't worry about that last message because that's not it. <clears throat> what happened here, Pisces, is it seems now this could definitely be for individuals that resonate with the twin flame journey. You guys worked on healing the dynamic between you and a runner. Then the divine masculine has, has been playing the role of the runner very well, hasn't he? But you see, the thing about that is when the feminine last year went into her healing mode, she became the runner. And now the, ma I'm sorry, yes, she became the runner and now the masculine is the chaser. Okay, but you healed this, Pisces. You put an end to that situation the coffin. And now because of that, you've got seduction and date. You've got new, you've got new love on the horizon. You've got a potential for really good, good new stuff. Pisces at the bottom of the deck, you have paradise expand. Uh, I'm sorry, happiness, expansion, joy, playfulness, oneness, enjoying each other, enjoying the masculine and feminine within you. Absolutely. Beautiful. Let's get some tarot here. Yeah. For message, some messages for Pisces, please. Five shuffles, one. Pisces, sun, moon, rising, Venus, and or cross watcher or any other placement that you are curious about. Three, uh, two. Three. Four. 
four. And five. All right, what messages do we have for Pisces? At the bottom of the deck so far, Pisces, you do have the Six of Swords. Beautiful, moving forward. Moving forward, no more. I just heard no more running away from opportunities that would really serve you well. And you're moving away, Six of Swords, you're moving away from the fears, from the anxieties, from the, the heartbreak, the mentality that has that would put you in a position to want to run from beneficial, beautiful opportunities, okay? For Pisces. For Pisces, January 2022. Eight of Swords. Knight of Cups is the first is the overall energy here for you. All right. Heart-centered focus, moving forward with your heart's desires. That's beautiful. You have the Eight of Swords, which came out here, but then the Tower came out with that. So this is literally you. Uh, what okay, this is literally you breaking out of the mental prison, the mental confinement, the conditioning, the stuck and the lack mentality. I was also hearing as I was pulling these cards, what once was hidden now is revealed. And that has broken you out of the jail cell. This is very much that energy of Mars moving through your ninth house as far as a Pisces rising. But again, you still could have been feeling these effects, right? You still could have been in this energy, even if you're not a Pisces rising in sidereal astrology. But technically speaking, this would be that energy of Mars transiting through your ninth house through Scorpio and Ophiuchus that's saying to me, I need to get to the bottom of this. Well, you did. And whether that gave you, like I said to Pisces Rising, whether that gave you a clear understanding as to specifically why something wasn't happened, or it just reiterated for you the fact that something needed to change here, you needed to be going in a different direction, ultimately you have effectively been able to break yourself out of this mental prison or out of this kind of uh, confinement here. Ooh, excellent. Finally, with that Pisces for your month here, you do have the Knight of Pentacles, the Nine of Wands, and the Ten of Wands. So effectively, Pisces, you are facing a situation in which you have released or you are releasing the burdens. And I understand that it might be daunting at first. Um, this is really quite new to you potentially so what spirit is saying here with this is that you're already on your way you have effectively dropped the burdens that have been holding you back again and i feel and some of you are really questioning why but even if you don't have the specifics as to why it doesn't matter it doesn't matter. You're going to drive yourself crazy trying to really get those specifics. And maybe if there's someone around you that's desiring that, stop trying to answer their questions. Stop trying to appease them. Because even if you don't have the specifics, but you know definitively that you've got to be doing something else or you want to be going in a different direction or whatnot, whatever, that is all the proof you need, Pisces. Okay, let me just, let me just make that very clear. I don't give a damn about no specifics, man. All right? And I, I do feel like there are some of you, there are some people around you that are like, well, why? Well, where did you get that from? <laughs> Very page of swords in reverse. Don't even pay attention to them. Do not give them the time or the attention that they are needing out of you. Some of you, that could be some of the attachment that you're moving away from right <clears throat> that codependent energy and that if there is someone around you that is acting that way that's just that's just a view into their own sense of codependency what is going on here hello sorry I... orion orion must have been standing back there yeah and the camera was picking up on it if you don't know orion is one of my dear cats anyway but what this is saying what this is saying here for you pisces Knight of Pentacles, Nine of Wands, Ten of Wands in reverse. You've effectively let go of the burden, even if you don't have the specific proof. So just keep going. Just keep pushing. Just keep persevering. Because know what it is you're moving towards or whatever it is you're trying to build is not going to happen overnight. Okay. But that doesn't mean also that it isn't going to happen at all. 
All right. So especially if whomever, whomever's around you in your ear talk about, I need all kinds of proof. And they're trying to discourage you from the direction that, you know, your soul is calling you towards that you're being empowered towards with this sun Pluto conjunction, please understand that they're coming from a codependent place. And they're probably really just trying to discourage you so that you don't move in this direction so that you don't leave them behind so that you don't leave them in the dust. That is codependency 101, babe. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm going to close out this part of the reading. And actually, Pisces, I want to close this out for you with the magic of unicorns. Oracle deck. This, to me, feels like a very personally empowering deck. And so I really want to help infuse as much power in you or help to accentuate as much of the personal infusion of power we're receiving here with the sun pluto conjunction i want to help reinforce that within you as much as i can yeah five shuffles one two oh also with this blossoming abundance energy that is at the bottom of the deck here i was picking up that especially again for pisces rising lots of 10th house energy this could be heavily directly re related to your career and finances yeah uh two Three, four, and five. All right. Closing Oracle Guidance for my Pisceans for January of 2022. Uh, there it is right there. Excellent. Oh, that's beautiful. Aha. Perfect. Overall energy at the bottom of the deck for you, Pisces. Card number four. Unicorn. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Uncord relationships. Let go. Forgiveness is freedom. That is directly related to this attachment energy, Pisces. All right. Cut those cords. I just heard. I just heard. Allow them to be snapped right before your eyes. Pisces, you don't have to do anything other than shift your energetic alignment. Now, I understand that shift is sometimes a little difficult, but that's literally all you need to do. Because when you shift your energetic alignment, you shift what it is that you attract towards you, what is, what is, what is magnetized towards you, right? Cut those cords. Allow the cords to be severed right in front of your eyes by you shifting your alignment, allowing yourself to shift into the alignment that feels natural, that feels good to you. Yes? Finally, your closing message here is card number 34, which boils down to a seven. Cosmic Pearl. Expand your psychic gifts. Open the gate to angelic realms. Take this as it resonates for you. I'm not getting anything specific. What I want to tell you is take this in, take this message in and allow it to bring forward the guidance in, that it is meant for you specifically. And you know, logically speaking, it makes sense as to why I'm not getting a download from that message from this card. Why? Because it says expand your psychic gifts. Open the gate to the angelic realms, which means opens the, open the gate to the guidance from your higher self. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit here for a, two sec, for a few moments, and I'm just going to let you look at this card and take it in. Okay, Pisces. Now, if that wasn't enough time for you, just rewind a little bit and pause and take it in. But allow your, Orion, allow your spirit to guide you with the message there. 
with that said, Pisces, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. I'm sending you all so much love. If you would like a private reading with me, all of the information can be found in the description box below. If you would like your sidereal chart, let me know. I will send it to you free of charge. If you'd like an interpretation, I could also do that for you, but that would be charged for. Um, also, if, uh, uh, if you would like extra content with me, check, did I say this already? Check me out on Patreon patreon.com slash divine conversations. All that information can be found in the description box below. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. Welcome to the Unicorn Herd. With that said, I hope you guys have a fantastic month and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next reading for the month of February. Yes, beauty month. Take care. Mm -hmm. Bye. <laughs>